Sandesh, this is familiar territory for you. You've been in, in Kerala before. And uh, I just want to kick it off, Jim. Looking forward to an exciting season ahead. How has the recovery been so far? Firstly, good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to see you all. Good to see you too. Loved Likewise, your, loved your video when you were telling how a football is made in the Nivea factory. I hope you enjoy playing with the new ball this time. It's a new ball technology. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, about the rehab, of course, for any player, you know, when you go through that injury in a such a pivotal point of the season, because where we were going last year, fighting for the Shield and for the Cup, and I had to miss out, you know, like half of the season. Also missing out on important game for the national team. So any will any player will feel bad. So that was that. But I've been really lucky and really grateful for the people around me, especially FC Goa, the way they supported me through the whole journey. My family, of course, the way they have supported me. And here I am today. I've started training with the team. Of course, still not able yeah. to kick some plays. So I'm still taking my time. But uh, it's going really well. My daughter, Ilana, has helped me the most in this rehab because she's been the motivation because I wanted to run around in the park and the house with her. So it's going well. And uh, yeah, a few more weeks, I guess, I'll be back in action. Then rest, the board will decide. Right, perfectly said, Sandesh. Uh, Manolo Marquez is on international duty right now. National duty, rather. He led the Indian national team to that uh, nil-nil draw against Mauritius. So that's why he's not able to join us today. And as far as Indian assistant coach Gaurmangi Singh is concerned, he wasn't available to join us in the media interaction. Being back in FC Goa, it's a club that you have a special relationship with, don't you? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, good afternoon to you again. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's good. Really, it's good. They come back to the place where I want to come back, actually, because uh, first season I had in Goa was unbelievable. I couldn't believe that would be done good, uh, that good. So, yeah, I feel it in my home uh, from the first day. And uh, this summer I was thinking about it, that I, if I want to come back to India, I have to be to FC Goa because I feel it in my home. I feel my, my people there. I know uh, many people in Goa, around Goa, not just in FC Goa. So, yeah, they make me feel at home. So, yeah, in my mind was to come back. And when I spoke with, with Ravi and with Rossi, it was like, uh, we celebrate my family also because they love also Goa, they got to Goa two years ago and they, they will come back again. So yeah, for me it was like a success. Well, that's music to the ears of FC Goa fans who I know you met in an open day that was conducted by the club. Of the club. I hear sitting in Kerala, no, I think it's needless to say Kerala is Kerala plus just because of its fans. Same goes for FC Goa. When I used to play against them, I remember my initial memory, this is like what, eight, nine years ago when the ISL was just started. That loud chair of course ago that always stuck with me. It was it was used to give goosebumps, you know, going playing in Patorta and hearing that. Because they give that energy to the squad, to the team, and they are the energy of the football club. And for any team to grow or to have success. You need the most important ingredient in your success is the fans to rally behind you. And when you, I think you've been to Goa, you know how much they love football. So, yeah, it's very important for them to be involved as much as can be. And we need to put an effort as a club also to make them feel involved. And they will play again a pivotal, pivotal role in the success this year for FC Goa. And I'm pretty sure we as a family, I will have a great season ahead. Lovely, well said. Lara, I promise I will come to you as well. But before I do that, I want to open. Hi, Jinkai. Uh, you are a former player of Blasters and uh, you have a lot of fans from Kerala. So, how do you remember that days and uh, how was that uh, your days with Blasters? Do you miss it now? I have a lot of fans and a lot of uh, <laughs> other side of it also. But no, on a serious note, uh, I have great memories of, of being in Kerala itself. Uh, I remember when I landed last night here in this hotel. I spent what three, four years living in this hotel. I, I messaged Ivana, my wife, and I was like, I had such a nostalgia uh, being in this hotel. 
So yeah, like football in general, you know, we as athletes, we don't have a lot of control where we're going to move ahead in our careers. You know, a lot of factors play a role in your path as a footballer, but you cannot take away the memories you make during that journey. And I've been grateful that at that age, that period of my career, I was in this city and I had great mo- great moments and I think no one, regardless what has happened in the past or whatever will happen as football or not, it doesn't matter. Nothing will take away those memories away from me and from my family and I have, I cherish those days and it's good to be back here. Also, it's a lovely city, lovely people and just gives me a little bit of that nostalgia coming back here. I'm happy to be here, man. I'm, I was speaking to my wife this morning as well. I said, uh, hopefully when we have the away game here, I'm probably going to bring her and try to stay at least half a day or something in this hotel just to relive those memories. So, yeah, go back down uh, memory lane with her. It's just so, this hotel especially because lived a long time here. So really good to be back. But yeah, but the rivalry and the battle continues on the pitch as it should be. Can we have the next question, please? Yes, sir. Hi, Lava. Uh, last season, uh, you played brilliantly on the last part for uh, Ella last days. So, how do you see uh, the new season ahead? Uh, it's a, a new start for me, a fresh start. Uh, I, w- I got injured in the last game of uh, against Odisha in Bhubaneswar. And then uh, it was like, very, very tough time for me, like first two, three months. But uh, like FC Goa helped me in that time, like in every way on my rehab things in on the pitch and off the pitch as well. So now I am on my rehab and, you know, uh, trying to uh, come back on the field as soon as possible and help my team. Like how much they give me in last three, four months, like help me in my rehab every way. Now, my motive is to like give everything once I'll be back in the pitch for FC Goa. Yes, please, sir. Go ahead. Can we have the mic passed in the front row, please? You can just uh, stand right from the Hindu. Uh, even uh, as a coach, who's also the national coach. Manolo is also national coach. Like, so, do you think he's got too much on his plate now? Like, uh, probably he may not have much time or probably he's too much distracted uh, 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 because he has to handle the national uh, team also and then the uh, and the club also. So, do you think uh, uh, having too much on his plate could uh, could probably uh, uh, bring a lot of other issues to the club? Like, Would you feel that Manolo managing both the national team and FC Goa might have too much to do, too much on his plate is what the gentleman was referring to? I think you need to ask Manolo that question. <laughs> he's doing the job. I'm not the right person to answer that, but I think he's well equipped to handle both. And AFIP must have done the groundwork and all the things behind appointing him as a coach. So they both must have agreed and felt they can do it. But in detail, I think Manolo can answer it the best instead of me, I guess. Tanesh, is it encouraging for you that you get to work with him day in and day out? And I'm sure you'd want to make a return to the national team as well. Does it make it more encouraging for you? Well, yeah, in a way. Uh, because he gets to see you every day in training. So he knows exactly at what stage of the recovery you are and how far back in you. No, in that way, of course, it helps because uh, he knows my current stage and my future, how I'm going to be physically and mentally as well but yeah, I've been in the national team for like what, close to a decade now so I know like the whole medical team they all are involved in this whole rehab mind so but yeah just it's a joy to work with them you know I don't want to sound like start praising him then people start saying you know different things but you know he's, he's a great coach and anyone who has worked with him must have said this thousand times that uh, going to pitch every day and uh, his training sessions uh, and all those video sessions and everything, you tend to enjoy it a lot because you can sense you're improving as a player. And now when I get that chance to be in the national team, of course, I have to earn my place again after this injury. And it's, it's, it's good for me as a player to keep 
getting exposure to that level of training and that level of tactical training as well. So it's good, but uh, I don't really have thought like this much. So my answer could be a little bit uh, casual, but happy that he's on the board of course. As, as observers of the game, we can definitely say that uh, it's good in the long run if there is some sort of relationship that you develop at a club level as well. It'll only help the national team going forward. Uh, Iker, I wanted to come to you next. You've been in FC Guard twice now. This is your second stint. Could you make some comparisons between how you left the club and what it's like right now in terms of the team and the mood in the camp? Yeah, actually, I cannot see many big difference. It's true that year by year, the club is getting more professional, uh, getting more taking care about small details that could make difference at the end of the season. Uh, yeah, I think it's improving uh, step by step, year by year. Uh, but I cannot say the, 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 the club has uh, own DNA. They have, they are, the club is so familiar. The club is not just taking care about what happened in the pitch, also out of the pitch. Uh, they take care of all the people who work, who is involved in the club. So I think this is the, the good thing that it maintained in the, in the time. And uh, yeah, I think uh, FC Goa has the same DNA. It's true. It's have every team, every club uh, has to improve year by year because everyone is doing that. So if you're not doing that, you will uh, stay a little bit uh, downer. But I think uh, FC Goa is doing the things well, properly. Uh, and I think uh, this season also uh, the idea of the of the coach and the players uh, going in the same way uh, with the club. So I think uh, it could be really beautiful season if we are doing things properly, step by step, not uh, dreaming too much, just being realistic and uh, doing uh, everyone in the working in the same way. And is the body feeling well now? Is your recovery coming along well? Yeah, I'm uh, almost done. It's true that I need a little bit more training to 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 stay at the level of the of the teammates. But yeah, I'm I'm really good. I'm really happy. And also to be in, in Goa helps me to mentally also to feel free, to feel powerful. So yeah, it's going well, and I hope uh, uh, I will be back soon. In the, in the That's such an important point that you brought up over there. Mentally, a player needs to feel comfortable in the surroundings. Even if it's a physical recovery, mentally, you need to feel comfortable. So that's how much importance does that play a part in? Yeah, to be honest, for me, uh, when it happened, it was scoring the goal and uh, it destroys me. The first two days, it was, it was uh, the, I can say it was the worst moment of my career, absolutely. And uh, more about my parents, my brother, they were in far away that they couldn't feel what I was feeling. I was trying all the time to keep them calm, keep them easy, because uh, I knew that they would come back stronger. But in the first moment, it was like oh, everything goes down. And uh, yeah, with the help of family, friends, I was a uh, few months in, in my home. I did reset my mind. Something that I think I I needed because I was uh, I'm now I don't know let's say ten years out of my home and this break was good for me not just for recover well also to prepare mentally to be ready for uh, next season ahead to be uh, strong mentally and I think sometimes we need uh, to breathe a little bit to go out uh, from the football world from the football environment to touch again the floor, to know where, who you are, who you have around you, your family, your friends, that it is at the end the most important thing in life. So I think it came, it came, it made me good to now be 100% strong and mentally prepared to the season we have ahead. Lovely to hear that he can, not just a footballer's perspective, but a human perspective on the entire situation, beautifully said. Do we have more questions for FC Goa? Yes, please. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, FC Goa are one of the most consistent performers in the league, uh, who has won the ISL for the first time in the history. Uh, but yet, they lose their steps 
multiple times in the semi finals of the uh, indian super league losing out in the isl title uh, but uh, with the likes of additions like sadiku uh, aika and aga someone from genesee how strong uh, do you feel the squad is and what are the real possibilities you expect uh, from mc goa this season i think anyone can add how strong is the squad and what are the possibilities that you see with the squad he just described the journey of fc goa and how the team has been growing so if you want to take that first sandesh and then maybe iker and tara can answer i think how strong we are we can only answer that on the pitch i think that's the best way to answer that question i can say 10000 things right now how sun zu said in the art of war when you're too strong always don't play yourself and when you're not that strong pump yourself up so but words don't make that much of a difference what we do on the pitch on the 17th september and then going ahead will be the best answer to it but the preseason is going well and i'm as always very confident how the batch looks so sort of motivation a lot of uh, desire to win big things and uh, i did hear some of the things you said in the question couldn't make it out completely but you said that we always been semi finals kind of a, Yeah so I think that's it's all it's always about perspective if you look at the glass half empty you can say that yes you lost the same fight or whatever but if see go in general in the history of ten isles I think it's always been a team who's been around the finals and the playoffs always been a top 4 team so I prefer to look at the glass half full so it makes sense it's a big club so always near about winning big things and this year yeah that's we're going to go for the shield and for the cup as well like all of the teams and i'm pretty confident how we're going to go about it the best answer is go game by game but dream big and that's what we're going to do and work hard up we have time for about a couple of more questions the is this season sandesh mohammed uh, sporting could you let us know a bit about your experiences of playing with them through the years uh, against them rather Have you encountered them in a lot of matches? I think first of all, congratulations to Mohammedan for qualifying for the ISL. And I, I won't lie, but I think all the Indian players, in a way or two, wanted them to be in the ISL. Because you, you know, growing up, uh, Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, and Mohammedan, they were like the giants you know, of Calcutta. So you want them, and it's good for the league also to have them three teams together, the same division. So it's going to help the league a lot, and I've played against them a few times. Uh, they have a massive support all over, all over the country, not just in Calcutta. So it's good for the league, and uh, yeah, people are going to enjoy it, and uh, that's going to be fun, man. That's it. <laughs> have you played in the Kishore Bharati Krirangan before? I think I have played. You know, I've played in so many games. It's hard to remember the names of the stadiums, but in many stadiums I've played in. uh calcutta for sure i would have played for the latest i think i played against them in the turin cup two seasons ago when i was in bengaluru so i think they literally had like 20 30000 fans in salt lake and uh and it was good fun man <laughs> lovely iker what are your thoughts on having another team in the isl this is moment in sporting promoted from the i league yeah i think always is good to have new faces in a in a league uh It will be for sure. It will become more competitive. Also, the, the new team they're gonna make a beautiful first season, and uh, it used to happen. Your first season you used to make really good, good season. So we hope they cannot make that good season better than us. But uh, yeah, I think it will be good to see fresh, fresh class, uh, more energy, new ideas, and it will for sure it will be enjoyable. Lovely. And just as parting thoughts, Sandesh, you've already given your message to the fans ahead of this season in that monologue that you gave in the open uh, open house with FC Goa fans. So I want to ask you, Iker, what your message to FC Goa fans is ahead of the new season, followed by Lara. Yeah, I'm mean, not too much about uh, speaking too much about uh, out of the page because I think with the time I realized that uh, what you speak it doesn't count. It doesn't count for nothing. Just what happened in the pitch. So yes, people to to come to the stadium. That because I think we will enjoy a lot. Uh, I think football is also about winning, 
And I think uh, deep inside of my heart, I have this competitive uh, uh, character. So I think we will see also this this character that uh, we want to win. We want to get something big. And I think this is how we will achieve something beautiful. Lovely. And Lara? Uh, in the open training, last time when we did in front of the fans, there is a lot of kids, a lot of families, and everyone, like, like even, even the old people are like there to watch us. And uh, even in our training sessions, there is a lot of kids who come and watch us. So, like, in Goa, I've seen that, uh, like, even the small kids, like, they all want to play football. They all, all want to see, like, what FC Goa is, and they all want to come and, you know, see the game and all. So, I just want them to come the same numbers, like, you know, big numbers as they, they were before. Uh, in the stadium for the games and support us like throughout the season and uh, of course we will do everything for them like as like we can possibly and uh, and we will give them the bus in the end of the season yeah that's Goa for you one of the regions in the country with strongest football culture and FC Goa represents the strongest impulse of all of those football cultures within Goa thank you so much for joining us here today gentlemen and all the best for the season ahead stay fit stay healthy and stay happy as uh, I'm learning a bit of philosophy as well from you. So being healthy and happy is very important. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.